Hello everyone. Welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff. And in today's video lecture, we are going to discuss about parking studies. So, uh, needless to say, the importance of parking we have felt in our daily life, as in when we travel to a busiest place in the city or town. And if we are moving in the city in the peak hours, we can very well have felt the need of a good parking facility. If there is no proper parking faci facility available, then we have to wait for the appropriate parking slot to be available so that we can park the vehicle, which causes an unwanted delay, right? The congestion takes place and this may lead to an unwanted delay in our uh, like planning or in our journey time. Likewise, if the parking facility, the parking facility is provided, but the location of the parking facility is way too far than our destination. Let's say you want to visit a mall. However, the parking facility that is provided by the mall or that is available in the vicinity of the region is at a certain distance. So you have to park the vehicle there and then you have to go back uh, to the uh, to the mall, right? So this again becomes a bit of hectic or unwanted situation that uh, as a commuter you want. So it's very important to understand what are the parameters that are taken into account uh, for uh, for assigning a location for the parking facility and what are different ways in which the parking is done. All right, that is what we are going to discuss in this video lecture. <clears throat> So on all, uh, the discussion will be with respect to the standard vehicle, that is the car. So the, uh, whenever uh, in the uh, uh, topics that you are going to discuss now, whatever discussion that you are uh, going to do will be for a standard vehicle of length 5 meter and width 2.5 meter. Okay. In case uh, a special uh, parking facilities to be designed for some commercial heavy vehicles, then the length of the vehicle that is taken is 7.5 meters and the width of the commercial vehicle is taken as 3.75 meter. This will be specified uh, in case this special case is taken. Otherwise, the standard vehicle that is a car, a passenger car is taken into account whose length is 5 meter and the width is 2.5 meter. Okay. Now talking about the parking systems, uh, the parking facilities can be arranged in two ways. The first is the on-street parking and the second is the off-street parking. These are the two methods in which the parking is done. On-street parking, as you can very well imagine from the name, the parking is done at the side of the street, at the side of the street or at the side of the road. When this is done, it is called as on-street parking. That is, the parking is done. Parking is done along the curb of the road. The parking is done along the curb of the road. But many a time, it happens that the uh, that the road is one of the busiest route that is available. There is constant movement of the vehicles in between the route. So to avoid unwanted congestion, the parking facility is located at a certain vicinity to the to the uh, to the destination points of the commuters. So when a special parking structure is created or a special location is created, special location or a structure is built which is dedicated to the parking only, which is dedicated to parking only, that is at a certain distance, that is at a certain, that is at a certain distance from the destination, that is at a certain distance from the destination, that is called as the off-street parking. All right, on-street parking along the road, off-street 
parking at a certain distance from the destination points why it is done because a proper uh, location or a facility at that uh, destination point is not available now let us discuss first with for the on street parking and uh, parking along the side of the curve we have discussed about that now this uh, on street parking is uh, can be uh, this on street parking can be done in a variety of ways we can park along the parallel to the curb we can park at the 30 degree angle with the curb okay so like we have the curb right we have the curb of the road we have the curb of the road now the vehicle may be parked parallel to the curb the vehicles can be parked parallel to the curb the vehicles can be parked at an angle of 30 degree at an angle of 30 degree to the curb likewise they can be parked at 45 it can be parked at an angle of 60 degree and in the same way it can be parked at 90 degree to the curb curb that bifurcates the the carriageway to the uh, for, with for the from the shoulders all right we know we have discussed about the curb in the previous lectures so uh, talking about the uh, parallel parking in the parallel parking this is the curb right if you see in the image here this is the curb this is the carriageway this is the shoulder and this is the curb right this part this is what we call as the curb this is the shoulder and this is the carriageway this is again the curb this is the shoulder all right so uh, when we park parallel you can see the the vehicles are parked parallel to the curb then this is called as the parallel parking uh, a spacing of 0 0.9 uh, meter is kept so as so as to allow the vehicles to maneuver in between the uh, parking facility that is available so the number of vehicles that can be parked along the length of the curb so let's say if l is the length of the uh, l is the length of the curb that is available to us and keeping 0 0.9 meter spacing between the vehicles the total number of vehicles that can be parked in parallel format of parking is l upon 5.9 right we have discussed about the standard vehicle data we are taking into consideration so taking that n is equals to l upon 5.9 these are the number of vehicles that can be parked along the along a certain length of the curve when the vehicles are parked in a parallel format now when the vehicles are parked at an angle of 30 degree when the vehicles are parked at an angle of 30 degree the number of vehicles that can be occupied along the length of the curve l that is the overall length l that is available to us for the parking facility the number of vehicles that can be occupied will be l minus 1.25 divided by 5 okay so when the vehicles are parked at an angle of 30 degree the number of vehicles occupied will be equal to l minus 1.25 divided by 5 where l is the length available for the parking facility now <clears throat> why do we have this uh, l minus 1.25 let us understand this first so the vehicles here are parked at an angle of 30 degree all the vehicles will be parked at an angle of 30 degree this is the parking facility available to us that vehicles all the vehicles will be parked along the length l at an angle of 30 degree now if we observe that for a certain vehicle let's say this is the vehicle number one now this vehicle uh, number one what is the overall space it occupies along the length l the space that it occupies along the length l will be this much right we can see here this is the overall length this vehicle number one occupies in a similar fashion if this is the vehicle number two what is the overall space that this vehicle number two occupies along the length l it is this much this is the overall length that the vehicle number two occupies when parked at angle of 30 degree 
Similarly, for vehicle number three, the spacing, this vehicle number three take place is this much. And same goes for the vehicle number four. Vehicle number four occupies this much amount of length. And same goes for the vehicle number five. The vehicle number five occupies vehicle number five occupies this much amount of length. This is the length that is occupied by, by the vehicle number five. Now here if you observe, we see that this much amount of length comes as a common derivative or a common spacing for each vehicle, right? This is the common spacing that is occupied by each consecutive vehicle, right? There is a common spacing. This common spacing is what we, we have to subtract. Like, since this is occupied by uh, two consecutive vehicles, if we subtract this much amount of spacing, which we are going to see that it comes out to be 1.25 uh, as we derive this expression, we'll see uh, this expression will be, uh, or this length will be equal to 1.25. So we have to subtract uh, this spacing, this common spacing from the overall length that is available to us. All right, so this is what we are going to drive. Okay, so let's drive the expression. So we have already discussed that we are go we, the overall parking spacing is with respect to the uh, standard vehicle whose width is 2.5 meter and the length is length is 5 meters. Right, the length of the vehicle is 5 meters. Right, we have discussed here that the length of the vehicle is 5 meters and the width is 2.5 meters right this is the width of the vehicle this is the length of the vehicle vehicle is parked at an angle of 30 degree all right so <clears throat> let us for the sake of understanding we take this point as point a we take it as point a we take this point this point as point b this point we are going to take as point B. This we are going to consider as point C. This we are going to consider as point C. All right. And let's say this is our point. This point is our O dash. And this point is our point O. All right. Now, let us first of all take triangle triangle B O C. Let us first of all take triangle B O C. This is the triangle B O C. All right. So overall the idea is to see how much length is being occupied by the each individual vehicle. That is this length. This is the length occupied by the each individual vehicle. This is the common length that always comes, right? This is the common length that that will be coming so that is what we are going to subtract all right okay so what we are going to do is we are going to take triangle b o c all right so here our angle is 30 degree so if this is 30 degree this is 90 degree. So of course, by the property of triangle, this angle will be 60 degree. So taking cos 60 degree, cos 60 degree will be equals to base upon hypotenuse. Base will be OC. Base will be OC. Hypotenuse will be BC. Right. So cos 60 degree will be equals to OC upon BC. OC, OC is this, which is the standard width of the vehicle that we are considering. That is equals to 2.5. What is BC? BC we have to find. BC is we have to find. So we have to find what is the value of BC. 
so from here bc will be equals to 2.5 2.5 divided by cos 60 degree so from here we know cos 60 degree is equals to 0 0.5 so that is equals to 2.5 divided by 0 0.5 so this will come out to be 5 meters so from here we can say that our bc this bc is equals to 5 meters bc is equals to 5 meters okay so bc is 5 meters now let us take triangle triangle a o dash b okay we are going to take triangle a o dash b taking triangle a o dash b so this is 90 degree this is 30 degree this is 90 degree so this will again be 60 degree okay this will be 60 degree all right so here again taking cos 60 degree cos 60 degree will be equals to base is ab and hypotenuse is b o dash right hypotenuse is b o dash right so from here we have to find what is uh, what is ab so ab is equals to b o dash b o dash multiplied by cos 60 degree b o dash multiplied by cos 60 degree which will be equals to 0 0.0.5 0 .5 multiplied by sorry since we are writing like this so i'll just b o dash b o dash b o dash this is the b o dash that is 2.5 so that will be 2.5 multiplied by cos 60 that is 0 0.5 so this will come out to be 1.25 this will come out to be 1.25 and since this is a common width that we will always get as we have discussed just now so that is what we are going to separate from the overall length that of the parking uh, facility available to us so the number of vehicles that will be number of vehicles that will be occupied in a length l so the this is the overall length that is available right the overall length occupied by each vehicle is this much a to c right and since this is a common derivative that comes every time so which is equals to 1 uh, 1.25 so that is what we are going to subtract so the number of vehicles the number of vehicles will be l minus 1.25 divided by 5 so like this the expression of the number of vehicles comes like the number of vehicles that will be occupied when the parking facility is at an angle of 30 degree all right i hope uh, this is clear to you if still you have any doubt you can always ask in the comment section okay this uh, this is uh, again an example of uh, parking at an angle this is like let's say third, uh, the vehicles are parked at an angle of 30 degree you can see the demarcations on the on the road to ease out the parking space that is available and this is the curb this is the curb along which the vehicles are parked on the road so if you see not much clear spacing is required the vehicles can move back reverse and then can uh, go on with their journey right so the spacing uh, that is need to be required is uh, near to none as compared to that of the parallel parking similarly when the vehicles are parked at an angle of 45 degree the number of vehicles that can be parked in a curb in a length of the road uh, of l is l minus 1.77 divided by 3.54 you can derive this expression in the same way only thing is that the vehicle that has to be the angle of angle that has to be taken is 45 degree okay so the num uh, along a curve of length l uh, and the number of uh, 
of vehicle that can be powered is L minus 1.77 divided by 3.54. When the uh, when when the uh, angle is increased to 60 degree, when the angle is increased to 60 degree, the number of vehicles that can be powered is n is equal to l minus 2.16 divided by 2.89. Okay, here uh, there is a like the, only this much is the this much is the length of the curb that is uh, available or length of the road that is available for the parking facility at an angle of 60 degree. Right? This is a, the diagram got a bit extended here. Don't know why. Okay. So this is the expression n is equals to L minus 2.16 divided by 2.89. Okay. You can drive the same uh, using the uh, the method that we have discussed at, at uh, 30 degree angle parking. Now when the vehicles are parked at uh, right angle that is 90 degree 90 degree to the length of the curve again the length that is available for the parking facility length of the road that is available for the parking facility is only this much okay this is not the length that there may be space available along the road but that is not the space available allocated for the parking facility okay so along the length l the number of vehicles that can be parked is L divided by 2.5. Why 2.5? Because that is the standard width of the vehicle that we have taken into consideration. If the uh, standard width or your design, uh, your parking facility to be designed is different for, uh, like is for different vehicles, then the, of course, the formula will be changed subsequently, right? If let's say, if you are going for the commercial vehicles uh, whose width is uh, 3.75, then L divided by 3.75, okay? so. In case of right angle, the number of vehicles that can be powered along uh, length L is L divided by 2.5. Okay. Now, uh, needless to say, your parallel parking consumes maximum curb length, which decreases as the angle of parking increases. You can uh, very well see, like for if you keep the number of vehicles same, for same number of vehicles, for same number of vehicles, the maximum length will uh, that that will be occupied will be in parallel parking. The maximum length of the curve will be occupied in the parallel parking. And as we increase the angle, uh, the number of the length of the curve will keep on decreasing. You can very well imagine at right angle parking, the for say number of vehicles. Let's say we are talking about four uh, four cars, right? We are talking about the four cars. So at right angle parking, the length that will be occupied will be minimum compared to what we have uh, seen in the parallel parking, right? You can see for four uh, cars, the length is fairly larger compared to that of the right angle parking. So that is what it, here we are saying. Parallel parking consume maximum curb length, which decreases as the angle of parking increases. Parallel parking make least use of width of the street. You can very well see here in the images that if this is the overall width of the road, parallel parking through parallel parking, least amount of width of the road is being used as can be seen uh, uh, compared to what at the angular parking we can see. If this is the if this is the same uh, width of the carriageway at angular parking, higher road of the width is being occupied, right? So that is what we are discussing here. Parallel parking make least use of width of the street compared to the angular parking. However, angular parking or parking at a certain angle give better manu maneuverability. This means that along the length of the curve, if we are parking parallel, if we are parking parallel and along the length of the curve, if you are parking at an angle, Right, if you are parking at an angle, so you can see the vehicle that is tugged in between in case of parallel parking, it will be difficult for this vehicle to maneuver in between this, uh, these two vehicles safely. While here at the uh, angular parking, the vehicle can simply re uh, reverse and then move towards its journey. Right, so this angular parking gives better maneuverability, but the parallel parking gives you much space for the vehicles to move, right? So if we have 
this let's say they, we have two roads one is this and other is uh, this one right and if we park the vehicles like this we have better uh, carriageway beds available for the moment compared to what if we occupy the parking at a certain angle then the width of the road will is less available and likewise minimum curb length is consumed by right angle parking that is a uh, minimum at a, uh, at, at a fairly low length or a less length more number of vehicles can be parked all right so these are certain characteristics these should be re remembered uh, for uh, various competitive exams okay off street parking so we have discussed now about the on street parking now we are going to discuss about the off street parking right so off street parking as we have discussed at the start of the lecture is provided at uh, not at the destination point itself but to a to a further distance from from the destination point why it is done it is done uh, uh, because of the uh, why, uh, because of the lack of space lack of space uh, to avoid to avoid unwanted congestion to avoid unwanted congestion right and to provide better serviceability to provide better serviceability okay so let's say uh, we have a shopping complex area right and uh, like at the peak time in the evening it always get rushed right uh, so instead of uh, providing on road parking we we dedicate uh, area for the parking facility so no matter where uh, a person has to uh, shop from uh, whatever region they come they park in this location and from there they can go to their dif uh, different destination now this off street parking can be of uh, can be done in four ways we have surface car parking we have multi story car parking we have roof parking and we have underground par car parking right we have seen in we must have seen in our daily lives surface car parking when, when simply a uh, a land area is provided to park the vehicles at a certain distance multi story car uh, parking when we we have uh, a full fledged structure dedicated for uh, for the parking facility available then we have roof parking then uh, when at the at a building only we provide a facility for the parking at the roof and then we have the underground parking which we must have seen in the malls in our daily life uh, where the uh, the basement is uh, provided for the parking facility okay so this is your off street parking facilities okay so i hope uh, the lecture was clear to you uh, so that's it for the parking facility and uh, Thank you for watching the video. I hope the lecture was useful to you. If, if so, uh, do like the video, uh, post your views in the comment section and you can subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.